Hello, I'm Robert, <coughs> and a uh, fact checker and science blogger, and I uh, help people with the Facebook group, a Doomsday Debunked. I'll add a link to the description and do, do join the group if you need help with these things. So, uh, the, and this is about the Iran, uh, the U US strike on Iran, and lots of people are, are uh, getting scared and WW3, World War Three, is trending on, on Twitter and just to say that there's no risk of that at all. It's, it's, not, it's not, a, not at all a, a, a World War or even a war situation. And uh, I'm, I'm basing this, I do as I usually do, I go and look and I read, I read the articles, but I don't panic, I don't get scared like the rest of you. So I can look at this with a cool head. And uh, not about these things, I panic about other things, but not this. And so I, I look at these th news with a cool head, and I listen to uh, the people who who seem to who have the most knowledge, who have the most background, the most understanding. And I go by what they say, rather than all the hysteria and hype that scares people. So, for instance, this is um, a, 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 ambassador, a former ambassador, and he was on the uh, BBC News. And I also went by the Military Times, which has a high reputation and is, is used for, by politic fact, for instance, for fact-checking, and various others, and, and the retired admiral, and um, various other sources that uh, of people who, are, who, from their background, know a lot about the situation. And they are not saying that there's any risk of, uh, any significant risk of open war. Iran does not want to go to war with the United States. It knows very well that the United States is superior to it militarily. The US does not want to invade Iran either, because Iran is a very formidable opponent, even though the US is far superior to it. But it is not a walkover at all. It's a huge country, the um, size of Western Europe. It's got um, it's very self-contained, and it, it produces um, it produces its own food, its own uh, weapons, its own very high-tech gear, and it can't be starved into submission. So. Uh, it's 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 very much a stalemate situation, and neither side want to want to, want this to escalate into an open war because they're not going to they're just going to lose out of it. And so this is part of a long term tit for tat between the uh, United States and Iran since the U.S. withdrew from the Iran deal, though there have been other things before then, of course, and a uh, very long history between the countries. But the uh, big beef. For Iran is not really with US as such. The reason that uh, that the Iran is so um, is so opposed to the US is because the US supports Saudi Arabia and Israel and other traditional enemies of Iran, and and the the US support countries that support Sunni militants, and uh, of course. Although in other parts of the world it's not the same, but in the Middle East, as in some parts of the world, um, Shia and Sunni Muslims really don't get on with each other, and there's an awful lot of conflict between them. Um, uh, the Sunni and the, and the Shia countries are often at loggerheads militarily, and in other ways. And Iran is Shia, and Saudi Arabia is Sunni, and the and Iran really doesn't like Israel as well. So that's what's going on, and it's because the U.S. supports Israel and Saudi Arabia that Iran is so against, uh, and, it's, and so Iran is focused on the bases, U.S. bases and warships in the Middle East. And a lot of people are scared that. Uh, so, so I, yeah, just so I'll start talking, talking about other bits. So I'll talk a bit about. I, I, I've got a link to it. I'm not sure that I'll just read out too much of that, but I, I, I'll read out some of it, and. Um, so I just want to go, I'll go to Twitter, and I'll just show you, and this is, and show you why people are getting so scared. And then if you click through and see what it's about. So if you go there, and you see um, what's trending, and where is it, what's trending? Ah, it seems to have stopped. Um, World War Three is no longer right up on the top of my trends. It was. So maybe uh, maybe things are quieting out down a little bit with this. But if you go to World War Three, 
and um, you get all these people doing these memes. They just um, this is why it's trending, because you've got these um, funny memes and people laughing at them, and these are not people who know much about what's going on. Most of them, they uh, uh, they're, they're, it's, it's young kids and people are good with images and 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 faith. Uh, so, uh, you know, some of the five will. Uh, if you if you're not kind of panicking and caught up, then they're actually quite funny. Some of their the, the things they're sharing. Um, but there isn't any risk of World War Three. They don't know what they're talking about. <coughs> and um, so, uh, so uh, some of the things people say, and totally misinformed, is they say that the U.S. is going to um, bomb the uh, United States with a nuclear weapon. U.S. do not have nuclear weapons, and their missiles are, are they have kept with the requirement to not have missiles that can reach the United States. This is a requirement they've kept with. And they have inspectors and there's compliance and this is this is confirmed. They can't hit the United States. And they don't really want as I said, they're not really interested in hitting the United States. They uh, uh, and and then so what 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 actually happened? Well um the Pentagon killed uh, Soleimani who is uh, now he's an Iranian leader and he's highly respected in Iran and in, other, in some other places in the Middle East of course there's a lot of polarization there but he was also he was classified by the US as a terrorist and the, the reason is because he's the leader of the Quid, the Kurds uh, and it's a, a face it's only a few thousand uh, soldiers and not very big not, not, it's not a large part of the Iranian army He's not a big Iranian army leader. He leads this, it's basically a black ops operations. But he was also um, very significant in the fight against ISIS. So that was more in the fight, open in the front things. And and he, he's uh, Iranian civilization. People living in Iran will be very familiar with him as uh, as a video of him on the front bench in the, uh, in the front lines in the fight against ISIS. Of course, Iran is very strongly involved in fighting ISIS, and it was and he was crucial for eliminating ISIS in Syria. He was he was a very important figure there. But he uh, is also head of this black ops operations, and uh, and the, the only a few thousand, but they responsible for a web of connections and organ and sympathising with milt uh, and Iraq, uh, which then they can access. Iran civilized militants throughout the Middle East, and so the U.S. classified them as a terrorist organization. And there's no doubt he was involved in killings of Iranian so of U.S. soldiers and also U.S. civilians um, on on occasion. And the U.S. say, and this is where this is all secret, and the Democrats are objecting. They they were told they were not told about this before the operation started. And um, so uh, the Republican leader of the Senate was told, not the Democrat minor leader of the Senate, Nancy Pelosi was not told. And so they're all saying, you know, how, you, you should not have done this. This is an ongoing thing between the President and the and Congress, that uh, that the Congress is supposed to be, um, I mean, uh, supposed to get authority for wars, but the President is, has the authority for responding to immediate uh, threats to U.S. security, and the U.S. has been involved in starting wars where the president started it, saying that it was to defend um, in his role as president, and the Congress didn't authorize it. And indeed, most of the recent wars haven't been authorized by the Congress. So it's an ongoing thing between Congress and the president. But the in this case, uh, Trump was not uh, trying to start a war. He made that very clear, um, and he. And he and they say that the reason they did this is they had, that they had intelligence that Sol Soleimani, you know, however you pronounce it, um, was um, he was that he had was involved in an operation to kill civilians. So of course on the sceptical side, that people say uh, that actually there wasn't any evidence for any very imminent. So some people are saying that, some people are saying there was. So it's a bit like the Iraqi thing. You know, it's all secret, so we don't see the actual evidence that they're using. Um, but uh, the uh, so was it just a tit for tat for the previous uh, um, kill, uh, killing of the 
of, of the previous killing of a US uh, and uh, a contractor and then the, um, the riots against, which didn't actually kill anyone, but the riots when they attacked the US Embassy in response to the... So there are, there's been loads of things going back, one after the other, back and forth. You can't say who, even really who started it. But uh, it happened after, it escalated after the, after the US withdrew from the Iran deal. But it was a kind of, the, uh, most recently, the I Iranian militants who um, uh, probably influenced by this chap, then they killed uh, some uh, U.S. contractor and harmed some and some U.S. Uh, people, and then the U.S. Uh, killed 25 I I Iranian militants with a, 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 a strike which wasn't authorized by the Iranian government. Then they um, who, who then protested to the U.S. about that, then the Iranian. Uh, sympathising Iraqi militants, they, these Iraqis, not Iranians, they then stormed the uh, U.S. Embassy. A mixture of protesters from the from the uh, mourners for the funerals for the 25 Iraqis, and probably instigated by uh, Iranian militants, but they didn't have weapons with them, just improvised and um, petrol bombs, and then uh, and nobody was killed, and uh, and uh, just some fire set off. And now the U.S. are coming back again, and they, they did this very major thing of killing this uh, this leader. And so was it just a tit for tat, or were they right that he, in turn, was had a tit for tat of his sort, that his kind, that he was maybe about to kill um, large numbers of U.S. Um, um, soldiers or civilians, or both? We just don't know at this stage. And so anyway. The um, Iran is likely to respond in some dramatic way, but it's not likely to respond with open war. And uh, and so this and this this is based on on the most expert people I can find and what they said. So this ambassador he didn't say that. Um, he said that it's it's obviously American in escalation, a very big development. I have to see for the reaction. I think there's a steady escalation going on, and um, an ongoing tit for tat. To kill Soleimani, one of the most influential in the Middle East, is no small thing. And, well, they immediately did find it was his deputy to go for now. Um, but he's had the job for decades and built a network of people, and that's why it, and the selfies on the front lines against ISIS. And and pretty much everyone in Iran will, you know, all, all the Iranian public will know about him, and there's been great mourning in Iran, a genuine mourning by the general public, because of, they see of him as this great hero figure who helped defeat ISIS. But he was also responsible for the death of 600 soldiers. And then he hopes, for the sake of Iraq, the worst doesn't happen. In his worst case, is widespread fighting in Iraq. So, and, and that's what most of them are saying, that the effects are likely to happen are in the Middle East. Um, this is the US state actual statement. I've got that here. He was active, they say that he was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region, and that they did this attack in order to forestall um, this. Uh, but they're being slightly... Uh, and they, they said that they were all set to attack him, but it would depend who he was met by. And if he'd been met by normal Iraqi officials, and they drove off in that car, because it was... He was killed by a U.S. drone as he was driving off in the car from the airport. And they say that if he'd been met by the normal U.S. Iraqi officials, they would not have attacked. But he was met by Iranian sympathizing leading of Iraqi uh, militants, and that is why and that is why they attacked him. Uh, and they killed him at that point. He has been a long-term target, uh, your uh, opponent of the U.S., but they haven't. Um, done this attack before because of the um, because of the many possible negative consequences and that is why the US is being so criticised and basically it is a kind of trial without jury which the US have a tendency of doing these these days you know sometimes they've killed you know they've killed various leaders uh, uh, with without actually when in, in situations where it would have been you know uh, 
they could have arrested him and me all, but they, they wouldn't have been had a case maybe. So they just um, they just assassinated him, even though the Iraqis are sympathetic and he wasn't in enemy territory in any sense. He was in Iraq, which is friendly with the US. So you can understand why people are protesting about it. There's two sides to this, as there always is. Now, um, the, uh, the Russia, uh, this doesn't involve Russia or China. So a lot of people are saying Russia and China are going to attack the US. No, they're absolutely opposite. They are saying that they're telling everyone to de-escalate. They, this Iran, Iraq, the, uh, the, 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 the Sunni uh, Shia thing is absolutely, neither Russia nor China have any, any religious views on this matter. Not, China of course is communist, and Russia, Russia is as well, and then what they have by way of religion, then in, um, you know, Russia is mainly Christian, Eastern Orthodox, and uh, China, then it's Taoist, uh, uh, and Buddhist, uh, Confucian, uh, it's a kind of mix of all of those, that uh, they're religious, which, which they do have these connections, even though they're communists, they maintain these kind of religious connections, in kind of official way, not, not um, officially, uh, tolerated um, religion in, in China and then in Russia you know the uh, Eastern Orthodox is quite a bit to be respected in Russia so they oh dear I, I will just close I, I don't want to get any notifications of saying people who are contacting me so I'll just cover that bit of the of the uh, window I, I don't think it goes up in that bit if they do that so so anyway so um, if Iran is not going to want to attack the US and Russia and China are not going to want to be involved in a proxy war involving local militants. They, ha they, have, no, they, they have no views on this um, Shia-Sunni conflict. They, they don't care whether Muslims are, Sh are Shiite or Sunni. And uh, uh, if, if there ever was a direct military conflict, then um, possibly depending on the circumstances you might get a similar situation to like in Vietnam where the um, Russian had several thousand uh, soldiers in northern Vietnam and they were involved mainly in training and in supplying weapons and the soldiers were there secretly and not and not uh, not publicly announced to be there um, this is possible that is the very worst that could happen if there ever was a conflict there's no way that Russia is going to attack US directly and um, and China, they're, 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 theirs is a, 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 but Russia is a very uneasy kind of uh, uh, alliance with, uh, it's not really an alliance, it's a, a, a kind of mutual support of convenience um, with Russia where their interests coincide, as in Syria, where Russia and the Iranian have coinciding interests. It's, it's not an alliance like NATO or anything like that. And as for China, then China's involvement is mainly commercial. But and China, so now um, the Iran might block off the Hormuz Strait, but they always um, threaten to do that. They haven't threatened to do that recently. Some people in the group are a little bit scared of that. Well, um, they, uh, uh, Iran still has some exports going through the Hormuz Strait. And it's only when that goes right down to zero that it would make any sense for them to close it off. Because they're, they're they're destroying their own income when they have very little foreign income, and the the oil that they do manage to export through the Hormuz Strait is amongst amongst their very small amount of foreign income they still have. So it's not likely that they really wanted to, to close off the Hormuz Strait, and they haven't said that they plan to do anything about that. And they sometimes threaten it, but everybody knows that they don't really want to do it, not unless everyone else was to get it down to zero. And the uh, and the United States, then the uh, United States is now an exporter of oil. Uh, it's turned around because of the shale oil discoveries. So U.S. is not dependent on anyone for oil at present. Not in uh, it is affects the prices of oil commercially, but they produce more than enough oil. So even if the U.S. couldn't be blockaded of oil, as you know what I mean, in that sense. If the, if the oil supplies dried up in the Middle East, the U.S. would still have plenty. So it's not, it's, it, it is still significant, it's important for the price of oil, and 
the uh, US military support it, but it's actually China is far more concerned about the oil supplies in the Middle East than the US really is, so the US is of course concerned, but it's, uh, it does have an, a, a surplus of oil itself. And uh, so if Iran is not going to want to, and so I mean all this, just to make it clear, all this, I'm not an expert, I'm talking about what I've read that other people have said. And I'm summarising, I haven't bought up all, I'm not bringing up all the pages where I've read all these things. But uh, if I sound like an expert, no, I'm not expert at all. All I'm doing is I've read the best, the best sources I can find. And what, what I'm best at, I seem to be good at reading things very quickly and then finding what are the essential core of what they're saying. I scan through the page and I can find very quickly, oh, this is the chap who really knows what he's talking about. He's got the right qualifications. And this is the source that is the... Uh, there is a good source on this matter, and I don't panic, and I don't get my mind confused by panic, because that's just not my not my thing with this sort of thing. It is in other ways, I panic about packing for a long journey, but I don't panic about, uh, about this sort of thing. So I have a clear head, and I can read it quickly, and then I find the essential points, and then I can communicate those, these to you. And so that's what I'm doing. So... Uh, so Iran is not going to want to attack the US and Russia and China are not likely to get involved in a proxy war in a part of the local, nothing to do with, the, with these um, Iranian militants. Um, except, you know, they were involved with Iran in Syria but they're not involved in this sort of thing. And Russia was. And China is just not in, in the region much at all except for its commercial, commercially. Uh, recently, China, Russia and Iran did joint naval operations um, in, the, uh, in, in the Gulf, but uh, that, is to, it is, that does not mean that um, Russia and China would support Iran in any conflict with the US. It's because they have mutual interests in, 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 in protection against pirates and such like. Uh, if I wish I could stop, the, stop it from doing these notifications. I don't need these notifications. But anyway, uh, I can't seem to switch them off. I don't need them when giving a video talk. So anyway, uh, so uh, so now let's. This is the bit that China and Russia are both saying de-escalate. China has so China's foreign ministry spokesman has said China has always opposed the use of force in international relations. We urge the relevant sides, especially the United States, to remain calm and exercise restraint to avoid further escalating tensions. And Putin, I, I haven't found a statement from Putin himself yet, but I found a statement from um, a, a telephone call between him and President Macron, and where they agreed to remain in close contact for the coming days to prevent a new and dangerous escalation of tensions and call on, on all the parties to show restraint. And the pres French president reiterated France's commitment to Iraq's sovereignty and security and the region's stability. And he emphasised the need for the guarantors of the 215 agreement that includes Russia to remain closely coordinating calling on Iran to return swiftly to full compliance with its nuclear obligations and refrain from any provocation. So um, Europe and China and Russia, we are all very keen to return to supplying oil, to uh, buying the Iranian oil and, uh, and, getting and, and selling things to them. It's a billion dollars per trade that the US has switched off because of its of the leverage of the dollar. Without that, without the US leverage of the dollar in international trade, then the US would not have been able to do this to enforce these sanctions because nobody else is behind it. Just the US on its own, which is uh, through its international leverage is forcing um, uh, Europe, Russia and China to stop trading with Iran even though we want to. And in our view, Iran is completely, was completely complying with the Iran deal. And, uh, and we, I, I mean, I also agree with them on this, that uh, I'm in the UK. Then, so that, this is the point of view of Russia and China that you need to bear in mind. That they do support, that they say Iran was compliant, but they're not, that doesn't mean that they support Iran in a war against the US. And, and so constantly looking to try and find ways to be able to trade with Iran and get around the US restrictions on trade with Iran. That is the view in Europe. 
when we're not saying that we we're, we're saying we want the deal to continue with Ivan. And uh and Ivan knows that. Ivan knows that Europe and Russia and China are on its side in uh, when it comes to the Iranian deal. But of course not on its side when it comes to uh, to Shia militants. And where the US has totally messed this up, um, it made it so complicated, is that Trump uh, scrapped the, Iran, the Iranian deal and said he's not going to join it unless the Iran um, stops support of Shia militants. But he didn't say that the US would stop support of Saudi Arabia, which supports Sunni militants. So that's the problem, you see, that Iran does not want to stop its side, because there are various conflicts between the two, and, and and Iran is on one side, and Saudi Arabia is on the other side, and uh, the US is basically saying to Iran, withdraw your your support of one side and let Saudi Arabia continue with its support of the other side in these various conflicts, and obviously Iran doesn't want to do that. So I'm 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 not saying that Iran is right to support the Shia militants. And I, I don't think they are, and I don't think that, but I don't think Saudi Arabia is right to support the Sunni militants either. And you, and as again, everyone has a perspective. They're not just mad; they have a perspective. And this is how the Iranian people in Iran will be thinking about this situation. And so, uh, so, it's, it, so that's why it's, it's got, it's got, that's why it's got really messy. And uh, 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 and the. As you can see, it's it's quite complicated, but everyone is saying we, we need restraint. We, we, this is not going to be sorted out in any military way. There's no there's no military objective. If the U.S. was to strike, and was to try and invade Iran, then there's nobody in Iran that sympathizes with the U.S. Maybe there's one or two spies and things. That would be about it, you know, um, double agents or whatever. But uh, the general Iranian population. Is is unified, united in being opposed to the U.S. on this matter, and and it's a country that is the biggest Western Europe, population of 80 million. Um, and it's it's very uh, advanced in its military. It's, it's in some ways it's more advanced than Pakistan. You can shoot down the high U.S. Uh, military drones. It would not be possible for the U.S. to impose a no-fly zone on Iran. Uh, they make their own fighter jets, their own helicopter, military helicopters, their own tank, tank busting weapons, their own tanks, their own um, submarines. They have make their own cruise missiles, uh, which they stole f uh, did sign on from the U.S. They uh, they can fire their cruise missiles from submarines. They have missiles that can ballistic missiles that can hit warships. So with that background, the U.S. is not going to invade Iran. Uh, the People who talk about, uh, who the experts, if you look, people really know what they're talking about. Then, if if the U.S. wanted to invade invade Iran, then they would have to get to gather together just about you know the vast majority of the mil U.S. military around the world, and concentrate it all in Iran. And it was still would be you know a, a quite a small force to try such a thing. So it it, it really involves the draft if the U.S. was to invade Iran and something like the equivalent to the Vietnam War. There's no way that Trump wants to do that. So John Bolton was very fiery about it, but he's extremely impractical and not not a military chap. And uh, and he was fired, of course. And um, Trump knows very well that it, that the US can't invade Iran. And as I said, they, they, they talk about de-escalating. They said that this is a stop war, not to start a war. And I, I, you know, they're genuine about that. They may not... Um, be quite sure of all the, uh, 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 the ramifications. You know, they may be a little, a little bit. The U.S. tend to rush in. The Iran tends to stand back and be very slow. That's what the experts say, and they'll be slow and deliberate. They'll be thinking over several days. Uh, what do they do next? They will not. Um, they will st um, be stay short. According to the experts, Iran is going to stay short of open war. They do not want that because they know. They know that the U.S. can't invade them, but they don't want the U.S. to uh, to start. To, they know that the U.S. is superior to them militarily and could cause a lot of damage to them in any war. 
and there's absolutely no way they want a war uh, starting up with the, the US and the US don't want a war either. So that's that. So let's see what else have I done. So what might they do? So I, I found three different um, suggestions of what they might do. I think it's three hours. We'll see as I go through it. So one is a drone attack on the oil refinery or tankers again. And they might um, try to disrupt the oil supply. And particularly, they don't want to disrupt their own oil supply. So they might attack, they might disrupt the oil refineries in, in Iraq, for instance. And perhaps a drone attack on oil refineries in Iraq. They've got uh, very sophisticated drones that can evade radar, fly low, and fly around and attack from a different direction from where they came from. And uh, they, they've got very sophisticated drones which they stole the technology of from the US. And there was a lot of scepticism about whether they had these drones until they started flying them. The, they, they, there was a downed US drone and the US said, oh, they can't reverse engineer it, it's impossible. You know, we've, we've designed in such a way that there's no way they can steal the technology. But somehow they managed to do it. And they do have this, um, now have Iranian drones that are capable of the US drones uh, of that model of a few years back. Of course, they've worked on it themselves. And they can shoot down the very high altitude US drones as well. So that is one possibility. And um, and then the other kind of lower grade drones that are that are that the um, various Iranian militants have with some support from Iran and um, so uh, Fallon said that the uh, that, uh, Fallon said so this is the military times uh, as I said used by politically fact and it's it's a very high grade source uh, that's uh, that's what I wish I could stop them from showing these things anyway if any of you happen to know any way to stop uh, Quora from showing these little messages popping up, I don't mind the little red notifications, but I don't want no uh, notifications popping up because they sometimes show people's names or usernames or whatever, and and then you know I I might have to redo the entire video or something. I think that was the one was obscure enough, so you're not going to be uh, that I can maybe leave it in, but. Uh, if any of you know how to stop that, please let me know. Anyway, so uh, 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 whether it's tanker attacks or drone attacks, so, he, so Fallon, the, the, this is the retired admiral, so I talk about the ambassador now, this is the retired admiral who ran the US Central Command from March through to 2008, and said that a uh, significant blow to Iran, so it is probably going to reduce know the impact of Iran over the entire Middle East area is a very significant blow and there's no wonder that the US did this but uh, you know I mean if you avoid the, if you don't think about the ethical thing but the military significance of it and then the um, for the military significance you can understand why they did it but you can also uh, talk about the understand the repercussions of it as well and um, you know ethically it doesn't seem right because they Aren't at war with Iran, and they, and they, they if, if if it was legitimate, they should have just told the Iraqi authorities to arrest this chap, and then and then and have, have him tried. And it's it's basically an execution without trial, which the U.S. is um, in in a in a in a country that that the U.S. is in on friendly terms with, and so that is why there's so much protest about this. So, um, but, uh, 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 and anyway, uh, but, then, but then they say that he's a terrorist, but then if he's a terrorist, then why, why didn't they get the Iraqis to round him up as a terrorist? But uh, anyway, so, so uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not at all saying that he isn't, is, he, he isn't doing all these awful things, of course he's done all these awful things with the US, but the, but the way they're doing it is, is, is not really the way that uh, anyway, that, that you can't stand people protesting about this, especially if the Iranian sympathisers. And um, so anyway, as, as you said, what are the Iranians going to do back? And of course, I mean, if, if the US are right that, that this, ch so this chap was coordinated a very large, massive attack against the US, then the Iranians will know that. And so 
Uh, that would be something that would also factor into their decisions if they felt that the US was doing this doing this for a valid reason. Anyway, um, whatever it is, whether it's tanker tanks or drone attacks, uh, he says they will likely do do something, but they will have to calculate how far they want to go. As far as now, all that war, no downside really wants it, says Fallon. It's not in the interest of either party to do it. There's too much to lose. The Iranians have a lot of chess pieces on the table. So it's like playing a game of chess, and then someone knocks out your king, or someone knocks out your one of your pawns, or no, in this case, a knight or something, and then you know you 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 don't want to create a situation where you lose all your pieces. So uh, that, that's what he says analogy there, because you know any kind of conflict would end up with the U.S. doing more things to damage Iran's. Um, situation in the Middle East and they don't want that so they don't want to escalate either not, not really they, they, what, what the Iran want is a kind of significant um, thing to do to say as a matter of honour it's not really military strategy but they think that as a matter of honour the Iranians will feel they have to do something dramatic to show that they've kind of done something and um, but they don't really want this to continue with more repercussions and more repercussions back and forth to anything very big and significant like an open war because that damages their interests and influence. And so that's that. Now this is the worst case I've seen and this was Michael Morrill who was a former CIA deputy director during the Obama administration. And uh, and he's, he says that, uh, that they, he again says they will not conduct a military strike on US military forces in the region because they're going to lose that battle. So uh, not that the US is going to win against, is going to invade I I Iran, but that they're going to lose all the battles that they have if they fight, if they have any battles. So they're not going to do that. And uh, and they, they think that what, what they're going to do, so you know, they strike the US military forces, the US can very easily strike whatever it was in Iran that fired that. You know, they, they have their, maybe this launch a missile to the US, that entire missile base gets destroyed by, by an, 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 a, a US uh, strike. I mean, it's, not, it's, it's, it's actually going to be the other way around, that they get minor effects on US bases and major effects in destroying their own military capability. So it's not likely that they're going to do that sort of thing. And so they think that the Iranians are going to turn their proxies uh, oh, um, this is the worst case, loose throughout the region to go after civilians and at a time and place that they're choosing and, they th and so he thinks they're going to kill a senior American official and he thinks it could be anywhere in the world and he thinks that could even be including the US so they, certainly the Iranians have had some interest and there's been you know, intelligence uh, that the US have tried uh, that the Iranians have had interest in targeting in targets in New York. So there's increasing um, security in New York to make sure that nothing's going to happen there. <coughs> so that is the worst case, worst, worst case. But, they, but whatever they do, they would calibrate it so it's not going to trigger a war. I mean, they're not going to try and assassinate Trump or anything like that. Um, but they, uh, they're not going to start, start something that's going to be a, a warlike thing. But there's some risk that they would do some high, some fairly high profile assassination but I, 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 didn't, I don't find that very plausible myself you know of, of the various things that I've read but then this is just my own personal view there's the drone strikes there's the idea of an assassination you have to remember that although he was very forceful in saying this he's just one person and we do have this these are all of roughly of equal repute and reliability and sensible people and so he's just one view. And then here's another one. Um, this was an, an article saying that they, they actually don't think much is going to happen. There's going to be an awful lot of people, of, of the um, Iranians, sort of, sort of not of fiery words. But they, they, this article is based on, it's in, uh, it's, I, I just, uh, it, because it, it's one in Politico um, and I mean, it's not necessarily, they're not like military times where uh, they have a very high reputation. 
of all the articles it's like very very factual but they're, they're pretty good they're often pretty good I've, I've come across some good articles there and um, and this one I read and it seemed well argued and it was based on the history in the past for Iran and um, they're saying that in the past when when there has been um, big big things like this that the Iranians haven't responded um, by by rising to it and escalating they tend to go a bit quiet and 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 kind of consolidate their bases and 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 then decide what to do so as he as they say there the mullahs relish as assaulting america but are circumspect when facing a tough-minded unpredictable precedent the islamic republic had already pledged to retreat further from its nuclear obligations by next week so a move in that direction seems more likely at this point as opposed to blowing up American diplomatic and military outposts. So they're saying the same thing. And nobody really thinks that they're going to attack uh, military outposts. And, and, I, and, I, and I, there's only one person who really thinks they're going to attack diplomats as a response. Though it's possible they could. And um, But whatever they do, they're not going to want to trigger an open war. And, uh, and especially because say when facing a tough-minded and unpredictable president and this has really upped the game you know they've they've seen that the president can do this so they're not going to be they're going to be a bit cautious they don't want to escalate and get more things like this happening so uh, there's certainly going to be a lot of uh, tough language they use a lot of hyperbole in Iran they um, they're just noted for that so they say they're going to erase Israel from the face of the earth they always say that. So, um, and please don't get scared by the hyperbole, because that is just what Iran does. It's kind of very flowery language, very exaggerated, but, uh, at least in English. And, uh, I imagine it's, it's probably quite a bit like that in, the, in their own language too. And, and, the, and, and when they go and chant death for America, to America, they've been doing that for years. That's just what they do. And it doesn't actually mean that they're going to attack in America. And uh, so, as they say, they relish assaulting America in the in the ideas, in the realm, in the hyperbole, in the concept. Uh, but in actual in actuality, they're not going to do that. And this is the EU response. So the EU and Russia are very concerned about the nuclear deal. And th and that is actually the main concern, really is this idea that they might move move in retreating further from their nuclear obligations. It is just still hanging on by the uh, by, by the edge of the what's what's the word? Oh I can't remember the word. But by, by the fingernails as it were. It just they're just hanging on. The new, new the Iranian deal is continuing because Iran does want to remain within the deal. It wants to it wants to be able to trade with the Euro Europe and China and Russia. And uh, but it doesn't want to stop its support of, of Shia militants and that basically is its big problem and uh, uh, so and, and that's where we're kind of stuck and the uh, and, and Europe don't want of course don't want Iran to support Shia militants but they say that the Iranian deal is something that we've got that works that is stopping them from developing nuclear weapons and that we should deal with the Shia militants in separate initiative and that's basically the difference between the European and the US perspective on this matter well, whereas Trump is saying that we should um, we should use the leverage that we already have with the Iran deal and to build in a thing about the Shia militants and, and their general military capabilities in the area back into that as a kind of retrospective addition to the deal which seems kind of unfair I mean you know it, it, uh, but it, it, uh, from the Iranian perspective I mean why, why it, it doesn't normally work like that once you've got a deal you don't get members to the deal adding in extra clauses after the deal has been conclu concluded and, uh, and Trump is showing no signs of, of, of proposing a new deal that would be acceptable to Iran, so that's basically our problem. 
and uh, and Trump is the US is not hurt in any way by these sanctions. We only have a few hundred million um, in hardly affected at all, whereas the US has billions of trade with the US. Anyway, so uh, the EU's response is that the, the current uh, cycle of violence in Iraq must be stopped before it spirals out of control, and the EU calls on all the actors involved and, and those partners who have an influence in the to, to exercise maximum restraint and show responsibility. And they say the crisis could jeopardize years of efforts to stabilize Iraq. So they're also concerned about the effect on Iraq. So the escalation is more likely to happen in Iraq than anywhere else. So when they talk about Iran um, uh, targeting US um, diplomats, that would be in Iraq, most likely. The idea of them targeting a, 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 a US diplomat, diplomat in the in New York is not really very credible, very likely. It's far more likely someone in in Iraq because that's where where the where it's all at for the uh, there we are told about that. I mean that's that at least that is someone public. You you can go and see that notification. Uh, so anyway, and imagine that as I as I get more answers and more you more of these people, I, this is going to start becoming more and more common. It's, it's actually part, I mean, it's part of the moment because a lot of people are scared of this World War Three. so I'm getting loads of notifications just now. And if I sort of stop this and do it again because I had a notification, I'd probably never get it done. So anyway, uh, the EU stands ready to continue its engagement with all sides in order to contribute to diffusing tensions and reverse the dynamics of the conflict. Yeah, so they're worried about the escalation threatens the whole region, which has suffered immensely, and whose populations deserve life in peace. So that's what the EU is saying. That the, so you, you, we mustn't forget that there are lots of ordinary people, and there are in Iran as well. It's a, 80 million people, that's a lot of people. And they're going around leading their ordinary um, civilian lives. They're not militant militants. Most of the Iranians are not soldiers, and not militants, although they do have a very large proportion who, in, in the event of a draft, would be capable of being drafted if there was a war with the US. But uh, uh, but no, they're, they're just only civilians going about their you know, growing their crops, trying to reverse desertification, doing their their things to help with climate change. They're um, you know uh, selling things, um, buying things, artists, traders. Uh, musicians, composers, uh, you know, uh, teachers and school children, just ordinary people like anyone anyone else. And we, we mustn't forget that, that these are ordinary people in, in, in Iran, just like we have ordinary people in the United States. And they do have a perspective. And so, anyway, so, uh, so let's go to the last few things. So it will not lead to a nuclear war. They don't have nuclear weapons. And they're not actually focused on the United States anyway. And they're focused on Israel and Saudi Arabia. And China and Russia are not involved in this conflict. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I've, I've read all this. Have, have, have I read this? Oh, no. Yes, they, this is about the Russian and the Iranian. Uh, uh, so you can read this link if you're interested. They have a complex and sometimes contentious historical relationship. During World War Three, two, for instance, Saudi Arabia occupied northern Iran, creating deep suspicion and mistrust amongst many Iranians. If Moscow and Tehran had felt a working relationship in Syria, even though they have their own interests. That is a summary of the situation between Russia and Iran. And in that background, you can see they're not allies. Russia is not going to rush to Iran's defence if it's attacked. It's not that sort of a situation. Um, but uh, Russia and Iran have a complex working relationship. And Russia, of course, is the uh, same for Europe and China. We don't think that the US should have withdrawn from the Iran deal. So that's a factor as well. And But Russia don't want Iran to have nuclear weapons. No to China, no to the EU, nobody does except Iran. And even Iran doesn't want to have nuclear weapons. Because if nu Iran gets nuclear weapons, then Saudi Arabia, they know, uh, as they, Saudi Arabia is very wealthy, very industrialized, 
it is easily capable of producing nuclear weapons. There are many countries around the world who simply do not want nuclear weapons. And Saudi Arabia is one of them. In fact, the majority of countries who could produce nuclear weapons do not want them. Don't, don't want to have them. Saudi Arabia has supported the international um, treaty to, uh, to, for total elimination of uh, nuclear weapons. It, it supported, it didn't actually sign and ratify it because it wants to leave the um, capability to develop nuclear weapons very quickly if Iran has it. But it doesn't want to have them. It wants both it and Iran not to have nuclear weapons. But uh, it did support, financially support Pakistan because it's concerned about India invading Pakistan. And it supported Pakistan in its development of its own intrinsic uh, nuclear weapons. And it believed that, that Saudi Arabia could actually get nuclear weapons within a few weeks, very, very quickly, uh, by, uh, due, to its, uh, due to that connections with Pakistan. They have some secret agreement of some sort that would help uh, in the Saudi Arabia in some way to develop nuclear weapons very, very quickly. And, and Saudi Arabia said they could get it, they could get the nuclear weapon within, um, within a few weeks if, the, if Iran was to develop them. And that is why Iran does not want nuclear weapons, even though it would give it parity with Israel, but it would also mean that Saudi Arabia has nuclear weapons and Iran would absolutely hate um, to have Saudi Arabia have nuclear weapons. So no, nobody really wants um, Iran to have nuclear weapons, not even Iran. And um, and the and nuclear powers they avoid escalations. In fact, they both have nuclear weapons. Uh, so I mean, for instance, as I said, in in Vietnam War, then Russia was on one side and the U.S. was on the other side, but they didn't start a nuclear war. And uh, the Russia's nukes are only for use if the integrity of Russia is at stake, or something of equally large. And China is just only a new for a small force compared with other big superpowers, it is not very keen on nuclear weapons. It has kept its nuclear weapons small and it is not trying to compete in numbers with anyone else. And uh, it would only, it also has a no, it has a no first use policy. If someone attacked China with nuclear weapons, it would respond, but it will not use them otherwise. So uh, it's, com some people ask me, is this so uh, part of this is also people have asked me lots of questions, both in the group and via uh, Facebook uh, post uh, PMs and via tweets. And um, so in this, uh, this, I know this video is, is, is quite long, I'll keep it less than an hour, I'll try to. And so it's part because I'm responding to all these things that people have asked me. Uh, and so the first things that they're very they're scared about. So, uh, so another fear was that it's a bit like the Cold War. Uh, it's not really quite like the Cold War. Um, Iran has impressive capabilities similar to Pakistan, but nothing like the military capability of Russia. And as I said, it doesn't have any missiles that could reach the US. And the uh, if it, the very worst case, which is not, we're not on course for, then you talk about regional war in the Middle East. Um, but this is this not we're not headed that way at present, according to all the experts. That the, so I know lots of people are saying that, but when you look at the really the people who really really know what they're talking about, and who, and you, you even people who are expert, then they talk with hyperbole sometimes. They're they're trying they have a political view, they're trying to inspire people to action. So you need to look both at the people who are very expert, and the people who are not directly involved. So that's why I retired admiral is likely to be better than someone who is directly involved in the conflict just now um, because they give a more a distant perspective in that they, they know the situation very well but they are not themselves someone who is kind of trying to directly inspire politicians to action where they, you tend to get hyperbole so I tend to go a little bit for this kind of the more retired or you know the ones who are not directly involved uh, in actually sort of threatening you know, you get these people who make threats. So you wouldn't necessarily go by what Trump says if he makes some big threat, because he's making a threat in order to get some, have some political effect. 
Although in this case, Trump is saying that he's that it's it is he's starting to stop a war. So in this case, Trump is actually saying he's he's actually on that side of the, of the statement. In fact, and, and I just want to say also, I've had discussions with, about Trump as well um, over Facebook, and people saying, "Oh, Trump wants to do this in order to get re-elected." Now, I'm I mean, you could, if you're very rather cynical, say that Trump did this to did this to. Uh, uh, distract from his impeachment or something I think I'd be rather cynical I don't, I don't, I don't really think he is but um, but he is not what Trump does not want to do is to start a war so uh, he made that an election promise that he would not start any big war and I know this this thing that goes on and people say oh presidents in their last term they always want to start a war in order to get re-elected I don't think it's a very good support for that anyway and particularly in the case of the uh, of of Trump, then he would definitely lose votes if if a big war started um, in his election year. So there's no way that Trump wants that. And indeed, if this escalates significantly, then again, and and especially if it involves in he has already been sending several thousand uh, uh, U.S. soldiers out there because of the situation. And remember, he withdrew um, very quickly from Syria, and he is very keen on withdrawing U.S. soldiers from around the world, and that was an election commitment. And to have to send troops the other way, he doesn't want to do that. And the more he does that, the worse his election, his re-election chances are. So no, uh, Trump does not want to start a war with Iran, and um, and Trump also. Uh, during the first few weeks of his presidency, uh, and I was very concerned that he was going to be starting wars, because people have been saying, has been billing him up as a as a hawk. Now he surrounded himself by hawks, like um, John Bolton, but clearly later on, very much a hawk. Someone who has explicitly said that the U.S. should invade Iran, and and uh, John Bolton actually boasted that. That they would be having, that they would be celebrating. I, I can't remember what he said. Satiri or something. Or the, uh, the, 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 this time next. I can't remember what he said. But he said that that, that they would actually be in Tehran, in in the very near future. He is totally unrealistic. John Bolton is not was not a military expert, and that is not possible at all. And uh, but Trump turned out. To be someone a bit like someone who surrounds himself by barking dogs, but uh, but but then calls them off if they try and bite a stranger. And that, that is a little bit like how how he worked. You know, like like farmer was very fierce barking dogs to protect his mushrooms. That was an analogy from the um, from that's from the Lord of the Rings, where um, Frodo and uh, and uh, and his companions, Frodo and Sam and and Merry. And um, Pippin, and and they, and and they, uh, they get snarling dogs attacking them in in Pippin's, in in Farmer Maggot's field, and uh, and then Farmer Maggot calls them off, and they, you know, and he says that, you know, they wouldn't actually have killed you, you know, but uh, uh, they so uh, uh, Trump is a little bit like that, with his uh, uh, surround himself by forks, and they're very kind of they come to quite scary and snarling. And, but he he calls them off before they actually kill. They, I mean, of course he does. He's no he's no Nobel Peace Prize candidate. He is not. You know, he, I, I'm not saying that he's a he's a peacemaker in that sense. But he's he's not. Uh, uh, he he's, he calls himself a deal maker, and he has said that you know, he, he talks about being Nobel Peace Prize candidate. But I don't think many people take that seriously. Um, even though Ob and Obama got the Peace Prize before anything happened, I don't think he should have got it personally myself. And uh, but certainly Trump is no Nobel Peace Prize candidate, but he has turned out not to be a hawk. He's 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 uh, he's a bit. I think the best way to get a perspective on Trump is that he's a businessman. And he is not in the business of military particularly. He's not supplying military weapons particularly. He is uh, his main businesses are things like hotels and golf courses, and 
it would be very cynical to say that he, that he isn't going to pull off because it would damage his hotels and golf courses. But I think it's not, uh, it's not him, uh, not too bad, and too much to say that he has, he very much has the perspective of businessmen who uh, are involved in things like hotels and golf courses and other similar civilian projects around the world. And um, a large-scale war, of course, is not good for such forms of business. And I, I think that helps you give, give a, a, that's a good way of getting an understanding of his perspective on, on world events. And for instance, when he appealed to North Korea, then he talked about how North Korea would be a great place. He was just joking for a Trump Tower. But, uh, but North Korea is a very beautiful place. And he does have a Trump Tower in South Korea. So it, was, it wasn't really so much of a joke. You know, if, the, if, the, uh, if we did get uh, denuclearization of North Korea and peace between North and South Korea, then North Korea would be an opportunity for Trump for, for, for one of his towers. It, it, it is actually true. It's very beautiful and it has, uh, it has a lot of potential for a tourist industry. And, you know, we, we could see a future if Trump is successful, where we have a Trump Tower in North Korea, sort of maybe two or three years from now. So I think that helps you understand his perspective a bit more. He's very fierce and uh, uh, you know, he says very fierce things, he's got fighting words, but he is not a hawk in the sense of someone who starts large-scale wars, although he does do very serious as uh, usually localized and, and small scale military actions, and uh, and he he's a bit like a cat that lands on his feet. I, I mean, it's been very interesting watching what's happened uh, with the Trump administration, and I think I don't think we're likely to get another president like this. He's a very unusual president, and uh, I I think that. Uh, decades, maybe even centuries from now, people were looking back at Trump's presidency and still trying to figure out what exactly happened. You know, how did this happen? What, you know, what, what was he doing? And uh, history will, the future history will depend really on, on how things play out. And they might well um, you know, see him in quite a good light in some ways, especially if he managed the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. So I am personally very much opposed to many of his policies, but uh, uh, in, the, in the way that it's actually turned out, you know, in looking at the very troubled world we're in, and I don't think it's absolutely clear that, for instance, I mean, Hillary, Hillary Clinton was quite a hawk as well. I don't think it's absolutely obvious that the world would be a more peaceful place um, if, if the Democrats had got in in terms of wars. Uh, certainly uh, Trump is, uh, has, has not started any major wars, he's kept to his promise and I do think there's a possibility that he, uh, that he, that, you know, I, I think he doesn't want to start a war and he, he's, he has very creative, unusual ways of finding his way out of tricky situations and he sort of he seems very careless, like someone. So it's, it's like someone who is constantly on the point of falling over, but they never quite fall. And that, that's that's what he's he's, he's like, and uh, it's been very interesting to watch and you know try to understand what on earth is going on here. And nobody really can. Uh, so he's it's very he's quite unpredictable, but he is. He hasn't turned out to be the hawk that he's decided to be. Um, but you've got to remember that whenever the U.S. does an action like this, it's not just Trump. Trump doesn't just go and say to a general, "Go and kill." Or I'll just get his name right, because uh, you know, go and go and kill Soleimani, uh, and then he, and then the general goes off and does it. Any operation like this, then he would order a general. The general will be looking at this all or every which way, and they will be looking at things like, was there a risk of collateral damage to civilians? So this drone strike on a car uh, after it had left the airport had no risk of collateral damage to civilians. They would have been very careful about that. 
and and then the um, general will be thinking, you know, what what are the possible repercussions? And they will have gone through this in great detail. So it's not Trump who is making these decisions by himself. He is not the military planner. So I think that's an important thing to bear in mind. He would have been presented with very detailed plans, and if he had he had and if he had crazy ideas of his sort, then the generals would just refuse to do them. So, for instance, if Trump was to say to a general, go and invade Iran, then the general would say, no, we're not going to do that. He would literally refuse the order because he would say, we don't have sufficient troop to do that. Uh, lots of people are going to be killed. Uh, civilians are going to be killed too in large numbers. This is against the four principles of armed warfare. We can't do this. And, uh, and, and, sh and they would literally refuse. And um, the, 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 those, there are rumours which may be true that during the Iran strike in Syria, when they attacked the chemical weapons factory, that Trump wanted to kill uh, Iranian uh, positions with Iranian soldiers in them. No, no, sorry, with Russian soldiers in them. Which, of course, would be a very serious thing to do. And that he was stopped. Now, I don't know if that's true, uh, but uh, but that is the sort of situation. I mean, in that situation, if someone, it just as for example, if Trump had said, go and bomb this place, and his general said, put the Russian soldiers there, and he said, go and bomb them anyway, and they say, no, we can't do that, because the implications in the region are just far too high, then the, 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 the generals would just stop, do have that power to just stop things. Um, if it, If it goes... Because the reason they can do that is because it's it's based on the principle that it, that in they regard Trump as the supreme leader of the uh, military uh, uh, civilian who is also in command of the military. But in military chain of command, then the military are empowered to refuse an order if to carry it out is a war crime. Uh, or you know, in some way against the international, the internationally agreed laws of um, of, of military conduct, and so uh, in that case, you know, start, starting up a potential conflagration that would harm, that would potentially harm lots of civilians, then that is going against, and so they would just say, no, we we can't do that. They 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 they're no shrinking violets, and they are capable of saying such things. And. And Trump will have learned this over the years if he didn't know it originally when he first became president. And uh, and he, he will discover that that you you have to work with the generals. So this this is not Trump just or he's he is uh, he he has this sort of falling on his continually falling over thing. But behind him he has these shrewd, capable generals who have risen up in the service and have been soldiers for many years and uh, and they, uh, they have a very clear head and so and the and the US and a very capable intelligence as well a highly capable US intelligence and so you do have to bear that in mind and we're not just talking about uh, crazy Trump or civil if you know what I mean if, I don't think he's literally crazy myself. I think he's actually very sensible myself not sensible in the sense that I that I would approve of his ideas but I don't think he's, he's not bad he's, he's got a kind of a canny uh, he's kind of canny he's kind of um, kind of savvy he, you know he, he he's uh, he, he's he's very grey area very borderline he does very dodgy things but he's um also very shrewd in some way, some ways. So now, is there anything else that I need to say? Oh yes. The, oh no, I, I explained that about the U.S. and the net exporter. They can't close the trade, and I'm I've got getting on for one hour and ten minutes. Uh, and these are my previous Iran articles, and so I've got lots of links there that you can go and read, and and everything I say is linked. I mean, if there's something I've said, and you you, you can't find a link supporting it. And do let me know, and I will look up in my notes. Um, and generally, there's links from the page. I know it'll be one of my previous links pages, and I'll probably know where where to go go to find the link to back it up. Um, but the this was this particular video was too far-reaching for me to just bring it all out as tabs all the way across there. 
and to find all it would take a while to find all the places and so on i based i've made based it mainly on this debunk but some of what i said is based on these previous debunks and i it would have taken up too much time to go around finding these pages and bring them up for you so but if you have anything particularly you want to uh, want the background information of then uh, do do let me know in comments and i i can answer you uh, i say I, i'm not expert on this at all all i'm doing is doing my best to present uh, what i found from the literature that i've read on the subject based on I think what I am quite good at is selecting what are the best reliable sources to summarise and finding them quickly. And um, yeah, so anyway, I hope that helps some of you to be a bit less um, scared about this. And no, we don't, don't risk World War Three. We don't really. If you look at the most, the most, uh, the ones that are most have the best background and saying most insightful, and most well-grounded things about the situation, then. It is it's not really credible that they're going to attack, uh, start a war and actually attack with a military attack. I mean, like, Iran is not going to do a military attack on the on U.S. bases or anything like that. They know that they, lose, they will lose those encounters, those battles. And uh, it's going to be still working through the Iranian militants. Or, I mean, I suppose the Iran, Iran might directly... I don't know, it would almost certainly be through the Iranian militants rather than uh, Iranian-sponsored militants with a certain amount of distance so that they can, uh, they can uh, uh, say that they're not directly responsible if something happens. Likely a drone. If, and and you know, it, it, it is possible, as of those three things that I said, three points of view. So the three points of view, just to summarise, three points of view were attack on all refineries or drones or a drone attack of some sort. Um, uh, attack on a tank because nobody mentioned shooting down a high altitude drone maybe that's a little bit too far they certainly are capable of shooting down the high altitude drones but I, I, no, I haven't found anybody suggesting they'll do that this time around the, um, so there's that there's the possibility that they try to assassinate um, a, a, a US diplomat or attack civilians and most probably in Iraq, it's very unlikely they actually would be able to succeed at that in New in New York, and it would be too much of an escalation too, probably. And then the other possibility is they don't do very much, um, because at times in the past when something like this has happened, they respond in a rather subdued, subdued way, not actually doing anything, but actually a um, lot of fighting words. And everyone else is calling on de-escalation and Iran do not want to leave the Iranian deal. They don't. Nobody wants nuclear weapons. Not even Iran. So that's my short summary. And they do not. Nobody wants Iran to have nuclear weapons. Not even Iran. I don't think there's anyone in the world. Hardly anyone in the world, apart from you know, within Iran. There's divisions. So Iran is not just one particular point of view. There are. Um, People within Iran who maybe would want them to have nuclear weapons, but the, the government don't want it. Anyway, I, I, I'm going on too long. I, I'll, I'll stop. So, any, any questions? Do say. If I made any mistakes, do say. Uh, I've got a bit better at it, but if I, no, if playing this video back, I noticed that I said something mistaken, then I, I, I put a little, I get a little eye thing at the top there. That was mainly, early, uh, I think I've got a bit better at that. I had a tendency to just let my, my mouth run away with me, just sort of say things uh, and then think, oh, was that really right? You know, did I, did I get that quite right? Um, but I'm, I, I, I hopefully I haven't done anything like that here. If I, if I have, I'll put a little, I, I, I'll put a little comment. You get a little eye thing, which brings up a poll, which, um, it brings up, it's actually technically a poll, but a few comments saying, you know, oh, actually, this is mistaken, and I'll say in the, in the description uh, of what, what the mistake was. Check, check, check the description after I upload this, just in case I have any corrections. But I, uh, and if you, and if you know, or if anybody knows anything I got wrong, please let me know, and then I will put that in the description. So again, so just check the description, and if there's anything that needs to be corrected, then it'll be in that. And so I hope this helped you. 
and uh, hope some of you will now be a little bit less scared about this.